The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. When you buy, keep your eye on the red bullseye. Keep your eye on the red bullseye. When you buy, keep your eye on Lucky Strike. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Lucky Strike presents The Man Who Knows, Mr. William Curran of Durham, North Carolina. Here's what this top flight tobacco auctioneer said recently. At more than a thousand auctions, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco that's sweet and mild. Just chock full of smoke and enjoyment. Year after year, experts like Mr. Curran, the impartial authorities of tobacco quality, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. So, when you buy, keep your eye on the red bullseye. Keep your eye on the red bullseye. When you buy, keep your eye on Lucky Strike. And remember, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where, as you know, he lives alone with his butler, Rochester. It's 9.30 in the morning, and as usual, one is in bed while the other is in the kitchen preparing the breakfast. Now, let's see. Where are the eggs? (laughs) So hard to find anything in this refrigerator. Maybe I ought to trade it in. I hear the newer models have a light in them. (laughs) Oh, oh, here's an egg on the bottom shelf. Potatoes are cheaper, tomatoes are cheaper. Now's the time to... That song doesn't fit now. (laughs) Gee, I'm hungry. I think I'll scramble my egg. Let's see, how do you scramble? Oh, yes, first I'll break it into this bowl. Hmm. Gosh, I'm weak in the morning. (laughs) Maybe I better have my orange juice first. Yeah, I'll make some. Yeah, that orange juice looks good. Now to get the seeds out. One, two. Oh, there's another seed. Three. (laughs) Well, they're planted. Potatoes are higher, tomatoes are higher. Now's the time to sell your car. <laughs> la 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 Yum, bum, 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 bum. Now to have my orange... Hey, that's funny, the glass is empty. Somebody drank my orange juice. Hmm, there's nobody in the house but Rochester. That's it. Rochester. Way to light. Rochester, Rochester, did you drink my orange juice? (laughs) Rochester, you're not fooling me. Get up. Bloop bleep. (laughs) Rochester. I know I'm cute, honey, but control yourself. (laughs) Maybe he is asleep. I'll tickle him and wake him up. 
Chester. Oh, it's you, boss. What a disappointment. <laughs> Never mind that. You sneak downstairs, drink my orange juice, and get back in bed. Orange juice? I was sound asleep. Sound asleep? Then how come you woke up so fast when I tickled you? You were using the hand you had in the icebox. <laughs> Now, Rochester, I made a glass of orange juice, stepped out in the backyard for a minute, and when I came back, the orange juice was gone. Maybe the mice drank it. Mice don't drink orange juice. In California? <laughs> All right, we'll talk about it later. Now, get up out of that bed. I want you to drive me down to the doctor's office. I've got to go for a physical. What's the matter, boss? You feel bad? No, no, it's just that my sponsor is taking out an insurance policy on me, and I have to be examined. How much is the policy for? A million dollars. But if I'm killed accidentally, the sponsor collects two million dollars. Two million? Yes. Boss, you better keep your... You better hope that guy keeps his eye on the red bullseye. <laughs> well, that joke was loused up. If I... <laughs> Oh, you mean the commercial? Well, I'm not worried about that. You know, they shoot that gun in another studio way over on Sunset and Highland. I don't even pass there on my way home. I know, but for $2 million, they can make a bullet that waits for you at Pico and Sepulveda. <laughs> what are you talking about? My sponsor is just trying to protect his investment, that's all. Now hurry downstairs. Imagine him denying that he drank that orange juice. Got a good notion to make him stay in bed all day. No, he'd like that. Hmm. No seeds in this one. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, Jack. Jack, are you up yet? Huh? Oh, hello, Mary. Come on in. I'm in the kitchen. What are you doing here so early? Early? I was here ten minutes ago. I came into the house, walked into the kitchen, nobody was there, so I drank a glass of orange juice and left. <laughs> Mary, you... you drank my... All right, here's a dime. <laughs> okay, smarty, I bet you'd be surprised if I took it. I wouldn't be surprised if you sued me. <laughs> I don't want the dime. Anyway, Mary, I've made a terrible mistake. I accused Rochester of drinking my orange juice. Well, that's you, Jack. Always jumping at conclusions. I do not. What about that morning you got out of bed and accused Rochester of taking your new suit? Well... Then you took off your nightgown, and there it was. <laughs> that wasn't my fault. When I come home tired, he's supposed to undress me. Well, anyway, I drank your orange juice, and you ought to apologize to Rochester. Oh, Mary, I don't have to apologize. I mean, he knows I'm sorry. He does not, and you've got to tell him. Oh, Mary, I can't. You can, too. Now, be a man. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Oh, hello, Rochester. Uh, Mr. Benny has something to say to you. Oh. Jack, go ahead. Well. Jack. Oh, all right. Rochester. Turn around and face him. <laughs> oh. Go on. Well. Rochester. Yes, boys. I'm sorry I said you drank my orange juice. Yeah, Jack, come back here. <laughs> I will not. Oh, what a baby. Well, I better get the car out. I got to take Mr. Benny to the doctor. The doctor? What for? The sponsor took out an insurance policy on Mr. Benny and he has to be examined. Oh, you think he'll pass it, Rochester? Pass it? Oh, sure, Miss Livingston. Haven't you seen his muscles? Yeah, they were hanging on the line when I came in. <laughs> Rochester. Oh, you're back. Yes. Now, Rochester, get the car now, and we'll go. Now, Mary, I've got to hurry away, so you try and... Oh, darn it, there's the phone, just when I'm ready to leave. Hello? Hello, Jack. Guess who this is? Huh? Who is this? I'm in a hurry. Well, I'll give you a hint. Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and I'm lumpy, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Don, I have to rush away. What did you call me for? Well, Jack, I've got the quartet here. We got a wonderful idea for a commercial. But, Don, I don't want to hear it over the phone. You can wait till rehearsal. 
Anyway, I don't like the songs that the sportsmen pick. Why don't they pick some things classy once in a while? Well, we've got one now, Jack. It's Listen to the Mockingbird. Oh. Oh, you mean the one that goes, Listen to the Mockingbird. Listen to the Mockingbird. Yes, yes, that's the one. Oh, oh, well, that's swell. Let me hear it. Are the boys close to the phone? <laughs> good, good. Take it, boys. Listen to the man who knows. Listen to the man who knows. He is saying lucky strikes the smoke for me. Very good. Listen Very to good. the man who knows. Listen to the man who knows. Like a bird, he's singing LSMFT. Like a bird. They're so round and so firm and so fully. So fully, fully. So fully, fully. Fully what? They're so round and so firm and so fully. Fully what? They're so fully, 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 fully what? Listen to the target ring. Boy. Listen to the target ring. Boy. You're right, yeah, 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 the red bull's on. Listen to the target ring. Fellas, I don't want the sound of that. He'll be ringing in your ears until you die. There's Boy, so I don't want the sound of that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. is it, they always start out so nice and then go crazy. I mean, we can't use that commercial. It's too noisy. Where'd they get that gun? They found it on a bench at Pico and Sepulveda. <laughs> no. What's that, Jack? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I'll see you at rehearsal. Hmm. I thought Rochester was only guessing. Well, I'm gonna have my orange juice and then go. Rochester, did you get the car started okay? Boss, when I know you're going out the next morning, I let it run all night. <laughs> oh. Jack, letting your car run all night, doesn't that burn up an awful lot of charcoal? <laughs> Not much. Well, come on, Rochester, let's go. Well, look who's here. Hello, everybody, I came in through the kitchen. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny, and thanks for the orange juice. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, now I'll have to squeeze another one. And only last week, the president asked us to conserve food. I know it's a problem, but everybody should do it. My mother conserves food every night. Well, well, she deserves a lot of credit. How does she do it? When it's time for dinner, she locks me in a closet. Dennis. But I got even with her. I ate the doorknob. What? Now every little thing turns my stomach. <laughs> Look, I haven't had my breakfast yet. What brings you over here, anyway? Well, I have an arrangement for a cute little song which I just recorded for RCA Victor, and I wanted you to hear it. I know, but do I have to hear it now, so early? Oh, this isn't early, Mr. Benny. I get up every morning at 7, go out to Griffith Park, set up my easel, and do landscapes. <laughs> what? Dennis, I didn't know you do landscapes. Yeah, but I guess I'm not very good because people pass by, look at the canvas, shrug their shoulders, and walk away. Well, don't let that bother you. I can't what? understand it. I use the most expensive brushes. Well... What kind of paint do you use? Oh, paint! <laughs> Here, kid, have a doorknob. Not on the head, Mary. Look, Dennis, you sing your song for Mary, and she'll tell me how it is. I gotta rush away to the doctor's. I don't blame you. You look awful. <laughs> what? Sing, Dennis. You said it. I'll see you kids later. Goodbye. Sweet Swedish Miss Hilda Swanson He wooed her, he pursued her All Wisconsin, her Johnson Sing Swanson the song Oh Hilda, oh Hilda, I've antinked your grand Will you, oh will you, let me hold your hand 
If I should ask you, do you love me too? Say, yeah, sure, you betcha, a Ben Tank a do. Oh, I do. Yes, I do. By golly, by yiminy, I do. If I should ask you, do you love me too? Say, yeah, sure, you betcha, I Van Tank I do. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen, we have here some of the great, the sweetest music. This hair, tired of its fun, sentiment of thought, the yeah, sure. <laughs> Let this Swedish boy thrill you until you are yumping with joy. There at the preachers when he says, will you? See, yeah, sure, you betcha, I Ben Tank a do. Oh, I do. Yes, I do. By golly, by yiminy, I do. There at the preachers when he says, will you? Say, yeah, sure, you betcha, a Ben Tank a do. Say, yeah, sure, you betcha, I Ben Tank a do. A sure do love you too, too. A do you too, you. Rochester, we're awfully late. Can't you go a little faster? Okay. You know, right after I take my physical, we'll go down to... Rochester! Rochester, they got me! They got me! Get back in the seat, boss. That was only a tire. Oh. Yeah, I should have known we're only at Pico and Robertson. <laughs> Rochester, you change the tire, and I'll walk to the doctor's office from here. Let me see, his office should be around here Oh, there it is, Doctors Fenchel and Gordon <clears throat> Yes, sir? Oh, I'm Mr. Benny, nurse I have an appointment for a physical examination Oh, yes, yes, I'll have to fill out this form Your full name, please Jack Benny Your birthplace Waukee in Illinois your age? 38. <laughs> your height? 5 foot 10. Your weight? 157. Your age? 38. <laughs> your home address? Uh, 700 North Rexford. Your business address? Uh, 360 North Camden Drive. Your age? 38. <laughs> your eyes? A robin egg blue. <laughs> well, Mr. Betty, if you'll just sit over there and wait, the doctors will see you in a minute. Thank you. Potatoes are cheap. Dum -dee -da -da -dum -dum -dum. Gee, that nurse is an attractive girl. I wonder if she'd go out with me if I asked her for a date. I wonder how she'd look without those white stockings. I wonder how she'd look without that uniform. I wonder how she'd look in a bathing suit. I wonder how she... Oh, I'm being silly. <laughs> anyway, I don't think that she'd go out. So there. long, doctor. Thanks a lot. Phil! Oh, hiya, Jackson. Phil, what are you doing here? Well, Jackson, I didn't want to worry anybody, but I've been having terrific headaches. You have? Yeah, so I came up here to find out what was wrong, and the doctors took some x-rays of my head. Here, you want to see one of them? No, x-rays are all the same, just bones, you know. Hey, here, now, here, take a look at mine. Well, what do you know? That's the first skull I ever saw with curly hair. <laughs> Phil, how did this happen? X-rays never show hair. I had it retouched. <laughs> oh. Say, what's this writing down in the corner of the X-ray? The name of the doctor? No, no, it says, To Alice with Love. I'm giving a tour for her birthday. <laughs> Phil, why in the world would you give Alice an X-ray for a present? Why not? She's got everything else. Oh, well, that's logical, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, tell me, Phil, uh, what do the doctors do about your headache? Plenty. Them doctors are plenty smart, Jackson. First, they gave me a complete physical. Then they gave me all the allergy tests. And then they checked my reflexes. And then they psychoanalyzed me. And they find out why you have headaches? Yeah, my band plays too loud. <laughs> No, they have the audacity, the audacity to tell you that? Yes, the audacity? And in, to... and in Latin, too. <laughs> Say, Jackson, what are you doing here? Oh, it's nothing. I just came for an insurance examination. Why don't you wait for me, Phil? It won't take long. Oh, I can't. I'm meeting Alice downtown. We're going to a movie. Oh, what picture are you going to see? Mother was tight. <laughs> That's mother wore tight. That ain't bad either, Dad. <laughs> Goodbye. So long, Phil. Mr. Benny, the doctor's waiting for you. Good, good. I'll go right in. Oh, doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, Jack Benny. Uh, oh, yes. I've been expecting you. Hello, Pierce Brothers Mortuary. <laughs> what? Don't get excited. I'm having lunch with Ralph Pierce. Oh. We're quite friendly. I throw him a lot of business. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, hello, Ralph. One thirty at the Brown Derby. Bye. Goodbye, Ralph. And now, Mr. Benny, I'll get my associate in here and we'll give you your examination. Oh, Dr. Gordon... <laughs> Yes, Doctor? And will you help me with this examination? This is Mr. Benny. Uh, pleased to meet you, Dr. Gordon. Oh, thank you. Now, Mr. Benny, will you please strip? <laughs> you, uh, you mean undress? Yeah. All right. I don't need the music. I'm uh, sorry. Our last patient was Gypsy Rose Lee. Oh. Now, get behind that screen and take off your clothes. Yes, sir. When you are ready, Dr. Fenchel and I will be in the next room. Oh, doctor, I have been concerned about that call you made this morning. Any information yet? Yes, I got a report from Dr. Stanley, and it's... it's all over. What was the result? She ran fifth and we lose four bucks. <laughs> Gee, we took a beating on the Dodgers, too. Yeah. I wonder what's taking him so long. Uh, Mr. Benny, have you got all your clothes off? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> then come out from behind that screen. Well, gee, don't I get a balloon or something? <laughs> Just slip on this gown. Yes, sir. There, I'm ready. Uh, very well. Now, hold still, Mr. Benny, while I listen to your heart. Uh, just a minute. I want to adjust my stethoscope. There. <laughs> well, that's certainly a peculiar heartbeat. Well, it has to beat like that. It's in my contract. <laughs> And now, Mr. Benny, will you please step behind this fluoroscope? Yes, sir. Good. Contact? A contact. Hey, Mr. Benny, there seems to be a round metallic object near your kidney. Well, that's a quarter I swallowed years ago. Huh? <laughs> Shall we, Dr. Gordon? Why not? <laughs> uh, Mr. Benny, will you please hiccup? Hiccup? Yeah. Uh, it's tails, Dr. Gordon. You lose. <laughs> this anyway. And now, Mr. Benny, drink this glass of barium. Barium? You mean all that white stuff? Yes, it's a harmless chemical, and when you drink it, we can follow its course through the fluoroscope. Oh, all right. Gee, it tastes awful. Drink it off. There. Ooh, look, Dr. Fenchel, the barium has reached the esophageal entrance. And there it goes over the cricoid cartilage, behind the tracheal bifurcation, to the arc of the aorta, 
Now it's passing the esophageal hiatus. If it passes Pico and Sepulveda, it's dead. <laughs> Now it's going through the esophageal gastric junction. Now it's coming around the kidney on the outside, headed into the home stretch. It's Barium sulfate by two lengths. Come on, Barium! Come on, Barium! It's Barium, the winner by a nose! Doctor! Doctor! <laughs> what is this? What's going on here? Did Phil Harris have to drink that Barium? No, he insisted on a martini. <laughs> a martini? Well, how could you trace it? We followed the alley. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> is, that, uh, is that all, Doctor? Yeah, that is all for now. You can go. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, Mr. Benny. Yes? You'd better put your clothes on. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gotta put my clothes on. I forgot. A pretty girl is like a melody. da dee da 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 dum dum da 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 Well, I'm all dressed. Goodbye, doctors. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye, nurse. Your age? Thirty-eight. Da 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 dum, dum be. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an old American custom to help the other fellow, and one of the best ways I know of helping those in need is through the community chest. By treating vital problems as they arise, Red Feather Services prevent these problems from spreading throughout the community and affecting the welfare of the nation. By giving to the community chest, you benefit millions of Americans directly and all of us indirectly. The sign of the Red Feather is the sign of a good neighbor. So give generously to the community chest. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a minute, but first... When you buy, keep your eye on the red bullseye. Keep your eye on the red bullseye. Keep your eye on Lucky Strike. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. American. Lucky Strike presents The Man Who Knows, Mr. Harry King of Durham, North Carolina. This veteran tobacco buyer recently said, At auction after auction, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy real fine tobacco that smokes up smooth and mild. And that's not all, for as Mr. King also said, I pick Luckers myself. Smoked them for 18 years. And as Lucky Strike smokers say, That's my kind of a cigarette. Real smooth smoking. So when you buy, keep your eye on the red bullseye. <laughs> keep your eye on Lucky Strike. And remember, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Yes, when you buy, keep your eye on the red bullseye. <laughs> keep your eye on Lucky Strike. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned in for Phil Harris's program, which follows immediately... And tune in to a day in the life of Dennis Day on Wednesday night. And... Oh, Jack, how did your physical come out? Oh, fine, fine, Mary, but I have to go back tomorrow. Why? I forgot my underwear. <laughs> Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.